in Canada. They found the BT toxin in 93% of the Canadian women tested and in 80% of the pregnant women tested and in 80% of their unborn fetuses. Now, if it gets into the bloodstream, according to a study on mice, it's toxic to red blood cells. If it gets into the fetus, there's no blood-brain barrier at that age. So the whole poking toxin might end up in the brains of the offspring of this generation. Now, why would 93% of the pregnant women in Canada have the BT toxin in their blood if the BT toxin should be washed out very regularly? They must be having some continuous ingestion of BT toxin for it to be there in such high percentage. That's according to the study authors. But most of the BT that's ingested in North America, pretty much all of it, is from corn. The cottonseed oil that we eat doesn't have the BT toxin in it. But most of the corn consumed in Canada and the United States is the highly refined corn, corn syrup, corn oil. And that doesn't have the BT toxin in it either. It wasn't like it was done in Mexico where they eat corn tortillas every day. So the authors surmised that the exposure was being developed or built up by eating the milk and meat of animals. Because the animals are fed BT corn and cotton meal. So I would like to propose a different plausible explanation. The only human feeding study ever conducted on the GMOs currently in the market showed that the genes from soybeans that were genetically engineered to resist spray from Roundup, part of them transferred into the DNA of our gut bacteria. Now, it, they didn't follow this up to see if the same thing happened with corn. But if it did, and if the BT genes transferred to gut bacteria, and if they continued to function, that might turn our intestinal flora into living pesticide factories. So that our very gut bacteria, which is useful for so many things, might be a cause of producing this BT toxin, which is known to elicit immune system responses and to poke holes in human cells. So the reason why the 93% of the pregnant women tested had BT toxin in their blood might have been because they were producing it themselves inside their own digestive tract. The third possible problem is that there are more herbicide residues. Before we get there, I'd like to ask, can you see already some reasons why the process of genetic engineering and BT toxin might explain the increase in digestive disorders, obviously holes in the walls of the intestines, uh, allergic re responses from the BT that could increase histamine. Histamine is related to digestive health as well. The uh, extra growth in the stomach wall, the intestinal walls, etc. Roundup may be worse. Roundup, it, since it has been introduced, the weeds have developed the resistance, and so people, farmers are using more and more Roundup it's a, the amount of herbicides used in the United States in the first 16 years of GMOs because of the herbicide tolerant crops increased by over half a billion pounds. Now, Roundup, it was originally patented to clean boilers and pipes. Not Roundup, but glyphosate, the so-called active ingredient. And that's because it is a chelator. It grabs onto the minerals. You know that mineral buildup that happens inside boilers and pipes and your tea kettle and whatnot? Well, glyphosate grabs those and pulls and, and binds with them. So it's a descaler. But it also uses that same action, that same mode of action to kill plants. And it's also a... And so when we when it's sprayed, when the Roundup is sprayed on the plants, the plants become mineral deficient. And the number one consumer of 
the mineral deficient plants are the livestock in the United States and they are mineral deficient. Then we eat the mineral deficient meat, the mineral deficient plants, and we have excess residues of Roundup on the food, which then binds with minerals and makes them unavailable. Without certain minerals, certain biochemical pathways will not function. Glyphosate is also a antibiotic. It kills gut bacteria. And studies show that it more effectively kills lactobacillus, bifidobacteria, the stuff that we want, the good bacteria, the stuff that we pay for, the stuff that reduces inflammation. It's, it has difficulty killing the salmonella, the botulism, the negative E. coli, the stuff that we, we don't want to overgrow. But if it overgrows, that dysbiosis is linked to a long list of diseases. It blocks a pathway used by the gut bacteria that produces L-tryptophan and other aromatic amino acids, which are the building blocks for dopamine, serotonin, and melatonin, important neurotransmitters. The feel-good chemicals, the chemicals that helps us go to sleep. And this will explain some of the other disorders of the 28 that are getting better. It also damages the microvilli and suppresses digestive enzymes. All of this you could see how they could cause problems with digestion. Glyphosate, if you put it in a, a plate of human cells, the, cell, the, the tight junctions between the cells will separate. This is another form of leaky gut. Holes in the cells or holes between the cells. Leaky gut, if it's increasing in the United States, that could explain many of those 28 different diseases. This is inside of a gut of cows and it shows that glyphosate kills a certain bacteria that when it's in prevalence, it keeps in check Clostridium botulinum. And when it's not there, the Clostridium botulinum increase. The Clostridium botulinum produces botulism toxin. And there is an epidemic of chronic botulism among the cow herds in Northern Europe. And this uh, researcher, Dr. Kruger, and others believe that it's the Roundup Ready crops being fed to the animals that are causing the chronic botulism.